In 2012, Camperini's memoir, Caveat Emptor, was published by Pegasus Press. This landmark book that caused a storm of controversy in the art world in New York and London chronicles his career as a master painter and art forger that spanned over 30 years. Camperini is still producing what he describes as the most deceptive fakes in the world. This is the first in a series of shows. Ken will begin by addressing the most frequently asked questions since the publication of Caveat Emptor. In future shows, Ken will give demonstrations of how he creates his masterful paintings and share many secret techniques he developed over the years as an art forger. Ken will also share his views on many topics, including the history of European and American painting, and give surprising insights on his favorite painters. Now, here is Ken Perini. Ken, how in the world did you learn how to paint? Did you have lots of lessons? Did you go to art school? However did you learn? No, I never, I never went to any kind of a formal school to learn how to paint. Um, I explained in my book, Caveat Emptor, how it all uh, happened. Um, I was very lucky in, in, in my life to have met some artists that introduced me to the art world and I learned, as I often said, by osmosis. Uh, I started out with old masters. Uh, I had a great love for the European painters. I um, eventually developed my skills to paint uh, pictures by Caravaggio, like this one here. And, um, and Dutch paintings like that there. And another painter that I love very much is Titian. Uh, this is an example of one here. But we'll talk about those in future shows go into more depth on that, but, you know, I often thought about the painters of old, uh, the great masters that I so revere, uh, and I often thought about what life must have been like for them, and you look at their paintings today and you wonder, how did they do that? How did they achieve these magnificent creations? And I have discovered in myself that when you have no safety net in life and you know that if you don't succeed you don't eat then you could it is remarkable what you can achieve mm -hmm. how you can push yourself and develop out of you could call it desperation or dedication or obsession whatever it is it'll push you forward and you will very likely amaze yourself at what abilities you can develop. I, I think in those days life, well I know life was very hard, it was brutal. And there were no, there was no help for a person if you fell on hard times. Today we live in a very um, uh, soft society, there's safety nets and there's unemployment and there's all these different things that they have for people, but in the old days you had to create something great and you had to, you had, to, there were many painters in, in, in the 17th and 18th century, they were all over the place, they, and you had to excel, you had to push yourself constantly. So I, I have discovered, as I believe, the painters of the uh, periods that I, uh, I enjoy studying discovered themselves that if you are desperate enough, if you work hard enough, you can create great things. You know, even Michelangelo said that um, uh, it took practice and study. Mm -hmm. And Jacques-Louis David, uh, one of the greatest teachers of the 18th century, said that you learn by watching. And, uh, and so it was with me. I, I studied paintings, I looked carefully, but I was always desperate. And it pushed me on to create better paintings. 
uh, and um, that's that's what I feel is the key to uh, to success. And uh, also, I would have to say that for me, it was a grand adventure that still is going on today. Um, I don't, uh, I can't sell my paintings to the auction houses anymore. <laughs> Uh, that unfortunately came to an end, <laughs> but I can still create what I believe are the most deceptive fakes in the world. I can sell them legally today as quote, quote reproductions, but where they'll wind up in 10 years from now, <laughs> one can only guess. <laughs> Ken, many people have written to you over the past couple of years asking questions and again and again uh, people ask, do you have a favorite painter? Well, that's, that's, a, um, that's not an easy uh, question to answer for me because I've had many favorite painters in different, different times in my life. Um, but there's a few, I would say, uh, a, a few that, that um, have remained, have a special place in my heart, I would say. If I had to characterize my life, I would say it was just one endless journey through the art world. Uh, I started visiting the Metropolitan Museum of Art when I was 17 years old. And at that time, I had uh, no idea what I was looking at uh, when I looked at the paintings. I, I, I didn't know any of the artists. I just roamed around and uh, just looked at whatever caught my attention. Uh, I, I would be attracted to different paintings for various reasons, but um, at first I was very interested in Flemish paintings and then Dutch paintings. And I started writing down the names of, of, of artists to um, uh, remember who they, they were. But uh, there were a couple of painters that stuck in my mind and made a, 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 a lasting impression on me. One was Francisco Guardi. And uh, he's... Um, he was a student of Canaletto, and he was um, what's known as a view painter. He painted uh, the canals of Venice in the, in the last half of the 18th century. And uh, I found his work very charming and captivating, and I went, found myself going back over and over again to, to look at his paintings. The other, the other painter that attracted me from the beginning was um, a French painter by the name of Hubert Robert and he also painted in the last half of the 18th century and he would be considered today one of the great decorative painters of the 18th century. Uh, both of these painters um, made an impression on me and uh, that and to this day they are among my favorites. Now, um, uh, well, I, I, I paint uh, Guadis. I've been painting them for a long time, and um, I'm, I'm going to. Uh, I'd like to do a show in the future where we're just going to deal with him uh, exclusively. But for now, uh, just a couple of little examples here. Uh, this is a small Guardi. Um, and, uh, and here's another one here uh, that you can see. And uh, I have a, a little uh, selection of them right behind me there. And um, Francisco Guardi, I won't go into a lot of detail now, but Francisco Guardi um, had to compete with Canaletto, who was the uh, the supreme master of uh, view painting in Venice in the in the in the late 18th century, so he um, he had a a very difficult time um, as an artist. Uh, he 
Canaletto got mostly all the great commissions, so Canaletto, so Guardi had to find a niche for himself, and he found it in these very small, charming little paintings that he painted in, uh, and he painted collections of them, ensembles, and uh, he would sell these to tourists that came to Venice on the Grand Tour uh, in the 18th century. So this was one of my favorite painters, and he still is to this day. And I've been painting these for many years, and uh, I've devoted myself to perfecting his style. And we'll go into this in more depth in, future, uh, in a future show, and we'll talk about how important the little figures are, the, uh, how careful and uh, he, the life that he was able to um, give these uh, tiny figures on, on, the, uh, on the boats and, 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 uh, and uh, on the, uh, the backgrounds and so on. So we're going to talk a lot about him. Uh, but of course, I can't talk about my favorite painters without uh, uh, discussing one of my favorite subjects of all, and that is 19th century American painting. Uh, you know, I, I, well, I go into this in detail in my book, but uh, I was fortunate enough when I was, um, when I was a young man to be introduced to the great art collector James H. Rico, Jimmy, as he was known to his friend and, and friends. And Jimmy lived um, just uh, in a beautiful neoclassical mansion that still is there today, although I understand it's been greatly uh, changed and restored and, uh, and, and so on, added on, wings have been added on to it and everything. But he lived up in Piermont, uh, New York, which is about 20 minutes uh, north of New York City, up the Hudson River. And Jimmy was um, one of the most uh, prominent collectors of 19th century American art, uh, primarily paintings and sculptor uh, in America. And uh, he lived um, in semi-seclusion in this beautiful old house. And uh, I became good friends with Jimmy, and he introduced me to 19th century American paintings. And through my friendship with Jimmy, I um, took a great interest, and I would say a great love, in a number of uh, American painters. One of the painters that I specialized in for a good part of my career was James E. Buttersworth. And Buttersworth was uh, the most important marine painter of the 19th century in America. That is. Uh, and he painted beautiful, uh, sparkling, detailed views of, uh, of the Hudson River and other venues as well, and picturing various yachts and, uh, and sloops and catboats racing in, in, uh, along the Hudson River. So we're going to do a, a show about James Buttersworth, and this is indeed one of my favorite painters and who I learned to master his technique and style to perfection and create original um, paintings by him mm -hmm. that I'm sure he would be uh, proud of if he were still around today. And then there's, of course, uh, uh, John F. Pito, who did these beautiful little still lifes, and this is another little original that I uh, created in his style, and um, I would um, imagine that Pito also would be uh, very pleased to see that someone is carrying on his work, creating new paintings uh, in his style. So then, of course, there is this man here, William Aiken Walker. And uh, <laughs> Walker traveled throughout the South, making these quaint little scenes of uh, people living in their cabins and, um, and, 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 and um, working in their fields uh, and so on. So, I've been painting him for many, many years, and uh, I've 
made so many of these pictures, I, 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 I can't even remember. Uh, but anyway, after that, then of course, one of my favorite of all, and that is uh, Martin Johnson Heat. <laughs> and uh, mm -hmm. Martin Johnson Heat, well, I write a lot about him in my book. And again, we, we will we'll do a, a program on him. But he painted these wonderful pictures, these wonderful pictures of hummingbirds he was famous for uh, in the hills of Brazil. And um, I've been carrying on his work now for over 30 years. Uh, let's see. Uh, here's some more here. Uh, he, did, he, he was also part of the Illuminist School, so I've um, invented many new um, uh, paintings such as this. The, uh, 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 for uh, uh, for uh, he, because he, he can't paint himself anymore, so I, I'm carrying on for him. And uh, this is uh, his Haystacks on the Marshes. And he did um, a, a great deal of these paintings. They're very interesting. And they're really studies of the haystacks on these flat marshes in various um, lights and seasons and times of the day and so on. So uh, I've painted a great deal of these and just show you a rear view of this. Um, uh, and uh, we'll, we'll discuss the... Um, the backs of my paintings in, in future shows also and how I create them. And this is uh, the type of painting that he is most noted for. And this is his orchid and hummingbird uh, compositions. This is an original, very fine one that I'm sure he would be so very pleased with if he could only see this today. Uh, and uh, so I've been painting these for many years and uh, well, <laughs> uh, they've shown up in different collections now and then. So, through the years I've had uh, infatuations with, uh, with many artists at different times, but uh, like different lovers, they uh, come and go.